This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Occasionally when you're editing your PDFs, you're going to run across a situation where you've made a lot of changes and enhancements, and when you're nearing the final phase and you're ready to send your document out for distribution, you're going to find something small like a typo or a word change that needs to be made, or some other text correction. One option at that point is to go back to the original source file, fix it, and reconvert to PDF from scratch. Then you have to go back through and make all your enhancements, adding links, adding bookmarks, articles, setting your views and transitions, and so forth. Now that's a lot of work, and you really don't want to have to go through all that trouble just to correct a small typo. Ideally, you'd like to be able to correct the text on the fly and move forward with your document publication. Acrobat does have limited text editing capability so that you can perform these kind of minor touch-ups. This is not a robust text layout tool and it's not suitable for major document edits, but if you need to correct a few words or fix a few typos, this tool can save you a lot of time. This is the document cfonewsletter.pdf located in the working files in the chapter 4 folder. We'll open the tools pane and expand the content category. And here we find the edit document text tool. We'll zoom our document to fit the width and select the edit document text tool. When we move our cursor over the document text, it changes to the familiar iBeam cursor for text editing. At this point, we can click in the document text and we'll see a blue rectangle showing the border of the editable text frame that's selected. Now, in order to edit text within a PDF document, you must have the very same font on your system that's in the document. Now, in some cases, converted PDFs can be a little finicky with font names and may give you a bit of a headache. For example, this document was created in InDesign, and this is the Arial font, which is on the system that created this document. But as we'll see, Acrobat has other ideas. Now if we right click in the text and choose Properties, we'll see a warning. The original font is not available and a substitute font for editing is going to be used. When we click on OK, we see that the original font is actually listed as Arial MT. However, the editing font is Arial and that's perfectly OK since that's really what we have and what the document was created with. So we can click through this. Right-clicking and going through the Properties dialog in this way is a good workaround that will allow you to edit your text. Once we've done this little dance, we can make our text edit. We can highlight the word OR and we can change it to AND. The thing to watch for here is text wrapping and the text wrapping is not really robust at all. So if we try to insert a longer word, we can see that the text runs into the other text in the next column and it doesn't wrap properly. So as you've noted here, if you need to make significant text edits, you may need to actually go back to the original authoring application. This tool is for touch-ups only. We'll go ahead and back up over that. One setting that may give you fits with this tool is in the preferences. If we click on Edit Preferences and go to the Touch Up category, you'll see that we have an option to enable text word wrapping. You have to be careful with this. It's a good feature and it can help you in some cases, but let's turn this on and see what happens in our document. We'll click on OK. In this text block, the text is recognized as one complete block across the page. Acrobat doesn't really recognize the columns and doesn't understand them. So if we start inserting text here, we immediately get text reflow all over the place and text wrapping that doesn't look good at all because of this multi-column format. So this is not going to work in this document. If you try the edit tool yourself and you get a crazy result like this, it may be because this option is on. So we'll undo this with a couple of Control Z's or Command Z on the Mac and then we'll go back into Edit Preferences and we'll uncheck this option to disable it for now. Once we've made our text edits, we can save our document and then we can continue preparing it to send it for distribution. Problem solved and we didn't have to go back and start over from scratch.
Now we can also use the Edit Document Text tool to add new text within our document. If we use the tool and control click on the document, we get a dialog box asking us to choose the font that we want to use and the direction, which could be horizontal or vertical. We can choose most any font in our system. We'll click OK and we can start typing our text. This is some new text. As we type, we can press the Enter or the Return key to enter some additional text on another line. Now, this is a little bit cumbersome. If we click away and then we click back inside, we can edit the text, but we can't move or resize this box. So if we pick the wrong spot, we're kind of stuck. We can't even delete this box using this tool. So if we want to make any modifications, we're going to need to use the Edit Object tool which we'll cover in detail in the next video. But here you have the edit text capability within Acrobat. Not a very powerful tool, but for last minute touch-ups to an almost finished documents, this tool can be a real lifesaver.